Hey everyone, I'm Gilad and I lead the makers and developers community at Halo. Today, I am very excited to introduce Raspberry Pi new AI kit featuring the Halo 8L entry-level AI accelerator, delivering 13 tops with a typical power consumption of around 2 watts. You can find the kit starting today at official Raspberry Pi resellers. With this release, we are also launching the Halo community platform and opening our developer zone to all users. Links are in the description. We've put a lot of effort to ensure that the installation flow and examples are as straightforward as possible, enabling you to keep data processing local, ensuring your privacy, optimizing performance, and managing costs according to your preferences. All of Halo examples are open source, and we encourage you to use them in your projects and products. Today, we are releasing three basic pipelines for different tasks, detection, pose estimation, and instant segmentation. These pipelines are built in Python for easy integration. Additionally, Raspberry Pi has integrated Halo Inference into its official RPI Cam Apps repo, which is Raspberry Pi C++ Camera Framework. In this video, we will review Halo installation flow on the Pi, our new GitHub repository, and the available examples. So, let's jump to the Pi. Okay, so what will we need? The Raspberry Pi 5, the Raspberry Pi AA kit, a micro HDMI to HDMI adapter, an active cooler, Raspberry Pi camera model 3 or the high quality camera, Raspberry Pi display cable, and a 27 USB 7 power supply. Let's start building. Okay, let's start by unboxing the Raspberry Pi 5. And let's connect the active cooler. Be sure to connect the fan to its connector. Let's prepare the camera. And let's open the AI kit. The kit comes pre-installed with the thermal pad between the M.2 and the board. You will probably will not need additional uh, heatsink if uh, you are keeping uh, your design uh, open to air and ventilated enough. Okay, and we are good to go. Let's get it connected. So, we are in a new, freshly installed Pi OS on the Raspberry Pi. We went to uh, GitHub and searched for Halo AI, Halo RPi 5 examples. Let's review what we have here. So, this is our new repo. repo. It is built to give you examples for the Raspberry Pi 5. We have an installation guide, which we will uh, review in a minute, and Halo examples. We have the detection example, the pose estimation example, and the instant segmentation example. We will review them soon. Now let's start with installing the installing the Raspberry Pi. Go to Halo Packages installation and switch to the Halo Raspberry Pi installation guide. Open the terminal and let's start with the installation flow. First of all, you will need to update the Pi. We assume that you are starting from a fresh new Raspberry Pi operating system. If you need guidance on how to do it, there are plenty of tutorials in the, in the network. Be sure to select Raspberry Pi 5, the 64-bit Pi OS, and put the SD card in the Raspberry Pi, and we are ready to update the system. Start by, run by running sudo apt update and the sudo apt full upgrade. This will install the new, uh, the latest uh, Raspberry Pi kernel, which also includes the Halo driver support.
Okay, and we are done. And now, in order to achieve optimal performance on the Halo device, it is necessary to set uh, PCIe to Gen 3. Uh, Gen 2 will also work, however, the result will uh, suffer from lower performance. The new Raspberry Pi kernel includes the option to change to Gen 3 in the new Raspi config UI. So let's run sudo Raspi config. Go to advanced options. PCIe speed and enable Gen 3. This is it. Now you can reboot your Pi. Okay, so we are back after reboot. Now we should install a Halo software. You should only run sudo apt install Halo all. This will install the following software components. Halo firmware, Halo RT runtime software. You can see more information in the Halo RT GitHub repo. In addition, it will install the Halo Tapas core package. The Halo core package is a derivative of our Tapas repository. The Tapas repository is our uh, application layer uh, used to develop application faster with the GStreamer framework. The Tapas core package will install only the Halo elements and the post-processing functions. This is used as a dependency uh, for the examples we are showing here. In addition, this will also install the RPI Cam apps, uh, Halo post-processing software stages. Uh, you can see more documentation in the official Raspberry Pi PyCam apps repo. Once this is done, we can reboot again. And this concludes our installation. Back from uh, reboot, uh, the installation is finalized. Let's, let's verify the installation by running these commands. Halo RTCLI firmware control identify. This will make sure that the chip is identified. If you get something like this, you are clear to go. Let's check the installation, the installation of the Tapas, the Tapas Halo tools. We are okay. You can exit by pressing Q. And last thing, we want to check the Halo element installation. This is the GStreamer element which run inference on the Halo device. If you got this output, you are good to go. If Halo or Halo tools were not fine, try deleting, deleting the GStream registry, uh, specifically if you are not running on a, a clean PyOS. If everything works good, you can go back to the Halo RPI examples. Please see the troubleshooting section if you got uh, any issues and join the discussion on the Halo community forum. Maybe your answer, your question was already answered. So. Okay, so let's continue and see the demos. Go to RPI basic pipelines documentation in order to install the, the application. Clone this repo. Once this is done, cd into the repo directory. And you need to configure your environment. As we said, we are using the Tapas, the Tapas core package. We are using the package config file in order to get Halo dependencies. You can set all dependencies and the virtual env sourcing the setup env script. Once this is done, all your environment variables will be configured and you will be inside Halo virtual env for this demo. When you're coming back again, you can just rerun the setup uh, environment script uh, to make sure that everything is set up again. Your virtual environment will not be overrun. We will just open the same one. Okay, let's install the requirements, the Python requirements. Make sure that you are install inside the virtual env when running it. And let's run the download resources script. This will download our network halves and a sample video. While this is running, let's review the application structure. The application is built out of three, uh, three parts. The first one is the user-defined data class. This is a user a uh, user-defined class which is passed as an in input to the callback function which will run on every frame running in the pipeline. It, it is used to communicate between the main application and the callback function. It extends the app callback class defined in the Halo RPI common file. This can be customized with your specific variables and functions. 
The second part is the application callback function. This is where you should add your code. This is a user-defined function that, that processes each frame in the pipeline. It is called from the identity callback element in the pipeline, which is placed on, after the network inference and the post-processing. This means that the GStreamer buffer, uh, which is an input to, the to this function, already includes the network output as Halo metadata and the frame itself. Each example demonstrates how to pass the specific metadata to its pass, to its task. For more information on the Halo metadata object, refer to the Halo object API. The last part is the GStreamer replication class. No changes are needed to this class in order to run the basic pipelines. This class sets up the GStreamer pipeline and handles events and callbacks. It is extends the GStreamer app a class which is defined in the Halo API common file. The applications can modify the network parameters and the pipeline by overloading the get pipeline string function. To see more information about how to build pipelines with the Tapas infrastructure, visit the Tapas documentation. Okay, now we are set and we are ready to run our first application. Let's start by running the detection example. Okay, as you can see, this is a detection application. It uses YOLO V6N as a default. It also supports YOLO V8S and YOLO XS leaky. Let's run it again and watch uh, the age top. As you can see, now we are running at 30 FPS and the CPU is using about a fifth of its cap capabilities, so you have plenty of CPU for your application. You can exit the, the application by pressing Ctrl C. Okay, let's run with the minus minus help flag in order to see additional options available for this uh, application. So we have the ability to control the input. We are able to run from file, a USB camera or a Raspberry Pi camera. We are able to add the use, the use frame flag, which en enables some additional post-processing in the uh, callback function. The minus minus show FPS will show you the FPS in which we are running. Disable sync will work when we are working from a file. This will make the pipeline run as fast as possible. This is available when you are working with a file. When you are running from camera, it will just run at uh, the camera speed. The dump dot is a debug feature that we will review uh, later on and the network flag allowed you to select different networks. The YOLO V6N, this is the weakest one but the fastest. The YOLO V8S, this is uh, the most accurate one. However, uh, the FPS might be a little bit slower. And the YOLO XS leaky, which is somewhere in the middle. Let's run with the video input. Let, uh, let's add the show FPS flag and the disable sync. As you can see, now we are running at 150 FPS. And if you will see at the edge top, the CPU is fully loaded. This is expected because currently the bottleneck is the CPU, not the Halo. So the CPU is limiting us to 150 frames per second. If you want to check the actual speed that the network can uh, use, see Halo RT CLI tools in Halo RT documentation. Let's see the pose estimation. In order to run the pose estimation, you can run this line. We are using YOLO V8 pose network. As you can see, all persons which are detected uh, are printed to the terminal and their left eye coordinates and right eye coordinates are also printed. Let's switch to the instance segmentation example. In order to run using a video file, copy paste this line. As you can see, we are running instant segmentation on the video. And the detections are printed to the terminal. Okay, now let's see how to run with the USB input. We have a specific guide to do this. You can run from a Raspberry Pi camera using the RPi. From file, you can just add the file path. 
and in order to use a USB camera, you should add the device location, the V4L2 device. Note that usually by default it will be Dev Video Zero. However, this is uh, this is not always the case, so you might be you might need to check uh, several uh, camera files. You can do it by using the FF Play uh, function. Uh, this will probably be one of the uh, of the even numbers, i.e. video 0, video 2, 4, 6 or 8. Let's try dev 0. Okay, we got it on the first shot. This is great. So now we can run the, in the instant segmentation with the USB camera. Okay. And here we are. New and more sophisticated projects and examples are coming soon. Join our community and follow this channel to get notified. What would you like to see next? Frigate integration, Unity integration, maybe just a wacky robot. If you have requests, suggestions or crazy project ideas, please write them down in the comments.